If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Greetings, Roundup family. Greetings. Good day to you. Another edition of Monday Masters. I am Chris Haskins. My mission and my ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. In doing that, I have the pleasure and the honor to bring on people that have affected my life and currently are affecting my life, changing the trajectory of where I'm going to end up. I get the pleasure of hanging out with people like Jay Connor. Jay, how you doing, my friend? Chris Haskins, my lands. As we say here in the South, if I was any better, I'd be twins and people wouldn't be able to put up with me. You know what I'm saying? Jay, I cannot believe you are here. I feel like literally a while back, I was seeing you on stage. I'm like, this dude, man, you are very polished. You're a people person. I've seen you in action and I've seen the deals you've done. Now I get to actually hang out with you and interact with you. Thank you, my friend. Man, I tell you what, shoot, uh, Chris, the pleasure is all mine. You know, uh, we started getting to know each other. Shoot, I reckon it's been over a year ago. And man, I just love hanging around you at, you know, the real estate events and thus and so. I mean, you've got a powerful story. I mean, you're, you don't, you don't talk the business. I mean, you walk the talk and you do it. And I love just being here on your show because, you know, um, this subject of private money, uh, you do it. Uh, we speak the same language and, uh, man, I just appreciate you inviting me to come on here and share with your audience, you know, how to never miss out on a deal because you didn't have the money. That's right. That's right. Roundup family today, we're hanging out with Jay. He's going to be talking about private money. I remember me when I learned about private money, I felt like my brain was just kind of, kind of it felt like it was doing a 180, Jay. Oh, my lands. Hey, when I first heard about private money, I felt like I had been, I mean, I felt like I had been baptized for the second time and was set free, you know, set free from the banks. That's right. So, Jay, give us a little background about you, my friend. Tell me about you. I know this guy on the computer screen. Tell me, how did we get here? Get, let's rewind a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. So my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we live here in eastern North Carolina in this little teeny tiny city, Chris, by the name of Moorhead City, North Carolina. And Moorhead City has got a whopping 8,000 people in the city limits. And our target market that we invest in single family houses is only 40,000 people. I mean, we're here in Moorhead City, Newport, Havelock, Beaufort, over on the beach down to Emerald Isle. And nice. so anyway, we've been doing this thing of buying and selling houses for 16 and a half years, coming up on 17 years. Wow. And I know it's unbelievable. And the first six years, Chris, that we were in the business, I was relying on the local banks. I was relying on mortgage companies to fund our deals. And man, things were going along just fantastic. Um, and I remember, man, like it was yesterday, I called up my banker. His name was Steve. Uh, the operative word is was Steve. And, um, you know, man, I'm, I'd had this conversation with Steve like, I mean, I lost, I don't know how many times. I mean, like many, many times. I called him up and I told Steve I had these, I had two houses under contract to close on the purchase. And they were, uh, they represented over $100,000 in profit. And I told him where they were located, the funds required to fund the deal and when I wanted to close. And that's typically all I told Steve, you know, when I would call him up and I had deals to fund. And Steve went quiet on me, which is never a good sign when your significant other or your banker goes quiet on you. 
And he cleared his throat and he said, Jay, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but the bank has collapsed your line of credit. I never heard of a bank collapsing a line of credit, but I knew it didn't sound good. I said, what do you mean, Steve? And I found out right there in a very short second that I had been cut off from the bank with no notice and no way to fund my deals. And oh, so wow. oh, my, wow. de my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. And in less than two weeks, I was introduced to this world of private money. And I don't mean hard money. I was introduced to this world of private money. And since that time, I have never missed out on a deal. Uh, I mean, since that conversation. And so, you know, we're in a small market. Um, I mean, since that time, I became known as the private money authority because I just got really, really good at raising a lot of money. And so, um, me and Carol Joy, we, our total target market here is only 40,000 people. <laughs> okay. We do two to three transactions a month. Uh, our average profit right now is $67,000 per deal. And, uh, so, you know, we'll do two to three, uh, per month, but you know, that multiplies out. Okay. And got a fantastic team. We've automated the business. Uh, pretty much what I do in the business is, uh, decide how much I want to offer on houses. Uh, do a lot with, we do a lot with virtual assistance and automating the business. But um, yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's, I mean, in a nutshell, how I got involved in this world of private money. Gotcha. Private money. So for my Roundup family members that are thinking they've been looking around and they, they kind of took a stab at trying to find financing for houses, Jay, I know they've heard about this hard money thing. Could you kind of give us an uh, a, 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 give us a, a comparison between the two? My land, sure. So yeah, you're right, Chris. I, I mean, you know, a lot of times when uh, real estate investors or people hear about, they'll hear private money, or they might see it in a magazine, or they might hear you know a speaker talking about private money. But in most cases, like over 90% of the time. In most cases, when, when people are talking about private money, what they're really talking about is hard money. So let me start just a second with private money versus hard money. So private money, we're talking about doing business with individuals, with human beings, just like you and me. So, you know, we're not talking banks, mortgage companies, institutions. Uh, we're talking about doing business with actual individuals that loan their money to us real estate investors, either, either th from their investment capital or from their retirement accounts. And of course, that's a big subject, as you know, right there, Chris, how important it is to know what self-directed IRAs are. Carol, Joy and I, we've got 48 private lenders right now that are funding our deals and loaning us uh, money for our deals. We got about $7.8 million dollars that we churn from house to house to house with our different private lenders. Well, over half of those private lenders have transferred their retirement funds to a self-directed IRA company, and then they can loan that money to us tax-free and penalty-free. In fact, we got one private lender loaning us money from his retirement account. Last year alone, he made $65,000 in tax-free money by nice. using his self-directed IRA. But anyway, I digress. Private <laughs> money, doing business with individuals. Hard money, most of the time, hard money is a brokerage or a company that is, uh, what they, here's what the hard money lender do, does. They're a middle person. So what hard money lenders do um, and look, no disrespect. I got great friends that are hard money lenders. In fact, I got hard money lenders that have taken my uh, strategies and my system for raising private money to raise their own money for their hard money lending business. So a hard wow. money. Yeah. Wow. Because, so what I do and what you do and what I train my students to do is how to circumvent the hard money lender broker and go straight to the source to get the funding for the deals just like the hard money lenders do. So your hard money lender is a middle person, a brokerage to where they'll raise the private money, jack the interest rate up, 
uh, and then loan money out to us, real estate investors. So they're just making money on money. So, so if you want me to, Chris, we can take a moment and just go over the most, the most important and critical differences between hard money and private money. Is that okay? Yeah, I know you got an hour. I don't want to hold you up, my friend. So whatever we can get into this hour with some Q and A, let's do it. <clears throat> okay, so. So I tell you what, um, shoot, I wish you had another little, uh, well, you can do it on your whiteboard. As I say, I wish you had a, like, make two columns, but that's all yeah, right. Here, here we go. Yeah, so if, like, you make, yeah, there you go. So, like, take your board and draw a line down the middle and make two columns. And the upper, the, the left-hand column, title that hard money. Hard money. There you go. And then the right column, title that private money. There you go. Private money. And we'll write categories over there on the far left hand side. We'll do about five or six categories and we'll do uh, comparison and contrast between yes. hard and private. There you go. So to the far left hand side underneath hard money, write interest rate. Just put that percent sign to the far left. So yes. the national average for hard money right now, interest rate percentage is 14 percent is your average national average right there, getting money from a hard money lender. Average private money is 8%. 8% is the national average on getting money from individuals. Okay. So, so right there is a big difference. All right. Second category, points, origination fee, one of the same thing. So PTS for points. There you go. So hard money, national average is four points. Four points. Uh, private money, zero. It never comes up in conversation. So, Chris, let's make sure everybody's on the same page here. So a point or an origination fee really is just more interest rate that the lender calls it by a different name so they make more money. But here's the way it works. Four points is, so let's say, so let's say we're borrowing $100,000. Well, Four points is 4% of the amount borrowed. So four points of $100,000 would be $4,000 that we as the borrower has got to bring to the closing table at closing out of our pocket. All right. So now we're already up to national average on hard money of 18%, right? Next category. Extension fees, as in EXT fees, extension fees. So what an extension fee is, is, you know, if you haven't cashed out on your hard money loan by the time the note comes due, if you've made your payments on time, your hard money lender, of course, they're going to extend your note. But what do they want? They want more money fees. So your national average extension fee is 2%. 2% to extend it. So that would be 2% of your amount that you borrowed. Uh, private money, extension fees, zero. They don't want the money back. They just want to keep, they want you to extend it and just keep paying the money. So we're still at 8% per year. We're already up to 20% per year on the hard money. Now, next big, 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 big category is percent. So you can just use that percent sign. Per Again? No, no, no. Down below, number four. So percent of purchase advanced. Oh, so, okay. okay. So let me explain myself. So let's say we're going to buy a house. And by the way, by the way, Chris, what, what we're talking about here, it works for commercial as well as single family houses. So, you know, you, you got some viewers and listeners that are interested in small apartments or duplexes or triplex, quadplex, or, you know, or apartment complexes. It's the same money. It's just the, the length of the note is a little bit longer. And the, actually the interest rate is smaller on commercial. But anyway, just want everybody to know whether you're interested in single family houses or commercial, it's, it's all the same money. Anyway, so here's what I'm talking about on what's the percentage of the purchase price advanced at closing. So let me give an example and then we'll give the answer. So let's say that uh, we're investing in this house that is got a $200,000 R after repaired value. It's going to be not dead, gorgeous, beautiful, 
$200,000 are. Now, let's say we're going to buy that single family house. Let's say it's an ugly house and it needs rehab. So let's say we're going to buy this house for $100,000, 50% of after repaired value, which is commonplace every day when you're buying like a bank owned property, et cetera. So you're going to buy for $100,000. The after repaired value is $200,000. So here's my question. In the world of hard money, what percentage of the purchase price will the hard money lender versus the private money lender give us at the closing table? And so, Chris, you borrowed hard money in the past, right? Or you yes, like me? You <laughs> borrowed hard money. Yes. Hard money. So let me let you answer the question, uh, Chris. In the past, regardless of how good the deal was, like what's the most percentage of the purchase price uh, your hard money lender will give you at closing? You know, Jay, at the best case scenario where you've been doing a million deals and they know you know what you're doing, you know, a veteran, the, the best is going to be 80% of the purchase price. Exactly. Best. So it's between, depending on your experience, your hard money lender is going to advance you or give you between 65% and 80% of your purchase price, regardless of how good the deal is. So here's the question. Who's got to come up with the rest of the money when we close? And of course, the answer is we do in the world of hard money. We do in the world of hard money. Now, in this beautiful world of private money, we get 100% of the purchase price. And in most cases, if we're going to rehab the property, 100% of the rehab money up front. So for example, let's say we've got that same example of a $200,000 ARV after repaired value. We're buying it for a hundred thousand. Let's say I got a $30,000 rehab budget. All right. So I'm going to buy it for a hundred. I'm going to get all that money at closing. I'm going to get $30,000 of rehab money up front at closing. I'm going to walk away with a big check when I buy. I love to get paid to buy houses. And of course, there's carrying costs and there's, you know, cutting the grass until you get that baby cash flowing. And you know, the way. hey, look, as much work as I put in making this hair pretty every day, I ain't cutting the grass, right? Somebody else <laughs> is cutting the grass, right? And we got the utility bills and we got insurance and taxes. So I'm just not going to borrow $130,000 for purchase and rehab. I'm also going to get some extra money for carrying costs and et cetera. So let's say I'm going, hey, look, I can easily borrow $150,000 in this example. I do not borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. So in this case, 75% of 200,000 is $150,000. Well, I buy it for a hundred at the closing table. I can walk away from the closing table with a $50,000 check, but that $50,000 check, I'm going to use 30 of it in our example for the rehab and the other money for carrying costs. I'm still going to get another $50,000 check when I cash out and sell that baby because that's the difference between the $200,000 selling price and the $150,000 that I still own my private lender. Wow. So anyway, we're doing a comparison and contrast. So percentage advanced. So we got eight, we got 8 8% versus 14%. We got zero points versus four points. We got zero extension fees versus 2% extension fees. We're getting 100% of purchase and rehab versus 65% to 80%. Hey, look at here. And then there's another big difference. The length of the term, the length of the note. So, you know, most hard money lenders, man, I need to give you a bigger whiteboard for Christmas, Chris, my lands. So anyway, so, uh, so on the term, the length of the note, most hard money lenders, it's either going to be six months to 12 months on their term, right? In this world of private money, the term is, the length of the note is two to five years. And here's what it depends on. So two years is typically what we borrow uh, for if they're loaning us investment capital, okay? Just liquid money. That's, you know, because when we pay them, 
that, that's not that's going back directly to them. But when we're borrowing from their self-directed IRA, we set that up for five years because that money's not going back directly to them. It's going to their retirement account. And, you know, quite frankly, though, Chris, I'm telling you, it's a moot point. I mean, they don't want the money back. In fact, when I cash out on my houses, my private lenders all the time, they say, Jay, can't you just keep the money? Can't you just yeah. keep the money? You know, no, I can't keep the money. I got to pay them back because then we go do a new deal because every deal stands on its own. I give them the collateral for each note. Anyway, Chris, let me stop for a second because I just covered like, you know, a half a day seminar in like 12 minutes. All so, right. So let me stop and, and you get me to clarify whatever I need to clarify. Let me get you back on track, my friend. Let me get you back on, not back on track, but let me keep you with, because I know your time is limited. Jay, help me understand before I, when I was, help me understand about credit, turning in tax returns, FICO, doing applications, having to worry about income statements. How does that work regarding private lenders, Jay? That's another big, huge difference between hard money and private money. So hard money, they're going to pull your credit for sure. They're going to pull your credit. Now, depending on the hard money lender, um, some ask for tax returns. Some ask for copies of your bank statements. They want to see how, you know, liquid you are. You know, some do, some don't. Um, but it depends on the hard money lender. You know, they're going to pull your credit. And, and depending on who they are, they're going to verify your assets. Oh, my lands. In this world of private money, here's the deal. They never pull your credit. Your credit, you can have, I'm telling you, you can have a mid score of 425, which is pretty low, and get as much private money as I do or anybody does. And here's why. Here's why. Private money is a collateral loan. That's why. Private money is a collateral loan. And I'll tell you, Chris, we, we get private money primarily from two different markets. We get private money from individuals that are what we call our warm market, people that we got some kind of relationship with. They're in our cell phone, our email, Facebook friends. And I don't mean your fake Facebook friends. I mean, people that you like really know, like, you know, you look at your Facebook, you know, and you go, where Facebook friend, where did them people come from? I don't even know who them people are. Anyway, I'm talking real Facebook friend, LinkedIn, that's all warm market, social media. The other main category that we get private money from are existing private lenders, existing private lenders. And, um, and I tell you, you know, sometimes, Chris, people tell me, my Lance, I'm on a roll now. Sometimes people tell me, they say, Jay, my warm market is broke. My people are broke. My people ain't got no money, right? Well, first of all, I don't believe them because everybody knows somebody that's got some money. But, um, you know. Say that again, I, Jay. What do you mean by that? They, what people say, I don't know. I don't know anybody. That. What did you say that again? They say, I don't, my people are broke. I don't know anybody that's got money. Well, let, let me interpret that. Let me, let me tell you what they're really saying. What they're really saying is, I don't have the confidence or the self-esteem or the experience or the confidence to approach people and offer them my program that's because nice. I'm shy and I don't know what I'm doing. and. Wow. Et cetera. That's that's what they're really saying. And I get that. I mean, I get that. That that's why people need to be trained and educated on how we do this private money thing. Because here's the deal. Did you know, Chris? I have never, 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 and I don't plan on changing. I have yet to ask anybody for money to fund my deals. I ain't ask anybody. All I do is make the program available and I don't chase, I don't beg, I don't sell. We attract the private monies. And, mm -hmm. and you know, once we get the word out and, and we got a fast automated way for real estate investors to get the word out about your private lending program, then people start chasing us, right? You know, I've heard you say it, Chris. I've heard you say it. You got people calling you up saying, Chris, I want to give you some money. Right? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, so that's what we do. That's what we that's what we share is how to get people chasing us. Wow. Wow. Roundup family. I got some other stuff I want to ask you, Jay. <clears throat> I know we are here with Jay Connor. Thank you for your time, Jay Connor. Just real quick, if you're just joining us, this is Chris Haskins hanging out with Jay Connor. We're talking about raising private money. Stop begging the banks for loans. Jay, when did you, what year was it that you said, you know what? I'm not going to get on my knee, hands and knees and beg for another loan from a bank. Oh, my Lance. I was set free February 2009. You remember that, huh? I remember it like it was yesterday. And you know what, Chris? I'm telling you, you know, all of us, everybody watching your show, you, me, every person on this planet, we go through these times in our life that are challenging. It can be financial, it can be career, relationships, health, etc. Yeah. We go through these challenging times and you know, I I, rem, I try to remind myself of, you know, what first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 says, in the yeah. midst of in the midst of everything, give thanks. So, it you know, does. it was a blessing in disguise, Chris. It was a blessing in disguise. When I, you know, when Steve, my banker, cut me off with no notice, I hung up that phone. And my first thought, you know, I had a choice. You know, I could have quit. I could have quit, right? But, you know, I learned a really important lesson in that and being cut off from the bank. Number one, I learned that it is impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible for me to fail. It's impossible for you to fail. It's impossible for your audience to fail until we choose to quit. You can't fail until you choose to quit. And, you know, I know I was created, you were created, your audience was created to be heroes. Your audience was created to be victors. And I'm telling everybody, don't you quit. Because as I'm saying, if I hadn't been cut off from the bank, I went from a million dollar line of credit at the local bank to over $2 million in private money in less than 90 days of being cut off from the bank. And, wow. you know, so, I mean, so many blessings, Chris. I, hey, look. I wouldn't be here on your show today if I hadn't have been cut off from the bank because I wouldn't have been forced to find a better and quicker way to get my deals funded. So, you know, wow. it's a, it was a blessing in disguise, blessing in disguise. That's ironic you mentioned that, too, because this happened to me, too. It was almost like you're going to the bank one day, beating your chest. I got my line of credit checks here. I do whatever I want. Then, I mean, it's got to be. It really does something to your psyche. Oh, my lands. And, you know, along with that, I mean, in this, I mean, when I was borrowing money from the banks, okay, the banks made the rules. The bank set the interest rate. The bank set the term. The bank set how often I make monthly payments. I mean, in this world of private money, you know, I make sometimes monthly payments, other deals quarterly, other deals semi-annual, annual. annual. Wow. Some deals we structure, I don't make any payments on that note until we cash out on the house, you know? But yeah, just stay, Wow, let's stay there just for a minute, Jay. We're talking about no payment loans. Stay here, then I'll move on to my next question I got. No payment, I don't want to, that doesn't even compute. Yep, so here's the deal. So no, no matter no matter if we make payments or we don't make payments or we make monthly payments or we make quarterly payments, whatever, the way that deal is structured with that private lender on that particular property, we pay or we accrue interest only. All right. So we don't make principal and interest payments. It's interest only payments. And so so let's say I borrow one hundred thousand dollars. Uh huh. And let's on that two hundred thousand dollar house, and let's say that um, I'm not making any payments, and let's say I cash out. Let's say I sell it on rent to own, right? So I sell it on rent to own. It takes them a little while to get ready for the mortgage. So let's say I cash out and sell that property twelve months down the road. So in that case, I'm gonna and I'm making I'm making no payments. You reckon that'll help cash flow? So I'm making no payments, right? So at the end of that 12 months, I'm going to cash out. I'm going to owe my private lender their $100,000 that I borrowed from them. 
And let's say it's right on day 365 to keep it simple. And I'm going to owe them $8,000. That's 8% of a hundred. I'm going to owe them $8,000 in interest. So I borrow a hundred. And in that example, 12 months down the road, cash out, I'm going to make a $50,000 profit, for example, or 30,000 or whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my real estate attorney cut my private lender a check back for $108,000. So they get the principal back along with their accrued interest. Principal back along with the accrued interest. So at the end of that term, instead of paying them back the hundred, the nice round up family, that's the worth the price of admission. When I learned that one, Jay, that really let me sleep at night better, Jay. You reckon? I mean, you know, if you ain't got to worry about monthly payments, I mean, you know, it, it helps the cash flow. So I know everybody's all up in arms about doing lease options, seller finance, and subject to. Tell me what type of deals can we use private money on, Jay? Because everybody wants to get in these, you know, the creative financing type stuff. Sure. So, so it's a it's an easy, simple answer to understand. And here's the deal: you use private money when the seller of the property requires all the money at closing. So anything in the multiple listing service, bank owned property, short sales, auctions, you know, auction.com, um, any, you know, so anything in the multiple listing service is going to require all the cash, all the money. Now I tell you what I've discovered, Chris, after reviewing thousands of property lead sheets from sellers. I'm talking off market. I'm talking for sale by owners, FISBOs. What I have discovered is that only 13% of those for sale by owners will sell to me creatively. In other words, only 13% of those FISBOs for sale by owners will sell to me with either seller financing or subject to the existing note or lease option it to me, uh, or anything like that. So, you know, sometimes people will say, say, Jay, I don't need private money. Like, you know, I'm just interested in the pretty house business and I don't need private money. Well, that's true. If you want to miss out on 87% of the deals in wow. the off market, because I mean, I mean, Chris, I know you know it, and I know your audience knows it. If anybody has talked, to FISBOs or off-market owners of properties, the high majority of them are going to require all the money and they don't have any interest in selling to us subject to lease options, seller financing, wraparound mortgages, and all the magic pixie dust you know you want to talk about. Now, let me be perfectly clear, okay? I have bought a ton of houses subject to the existing note. I've bought on lease options. By the way, I don't buy on lease option anymore. I, I want. I, you, I, with, you don't. You don't buy on lease option anymore. No, I, I want. <laughs> to, I want to own that property. Okay. So anyway, so I've I've done all that, and I still do it. I buy houses, you know, seller finance. I mean, look, if we're talking to somebody that's a FISBO and you know they're off market. And look, if, if they don't owe a mortgage, if they don't owe any money, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is let's talk about, I mean, when the timing's right, let's talk about seller financing. Let's talk about them taking their equity and monthly payments, at least for a certain period of time. But guess what, Chris? Knowing only 13% of them are going to go along with that plan, wow. the other 87%, I got private money sitting on the shelf. You got private money sitting on the shelf. If, if that negotiation goes south, then guess what? We got the private money to close. And Chris, I know you have heard what I'm getting ready to say. So some people say they got this mantra. And some people say no terms, or if they won't sell to me on terms, no deal. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you my mantra. No terms, private money. No terms, private money. I no like terms. So if they won't sell to me on terms, if they won't sell to me subject to the existing note, then we got the private money. And I'm telling you, when I first got my, in fact, my first private lender uh, pledged me $250,000. Said, Jay, go find, go find us a deal. In fact, time permitting sometime, Chris, I got to tell you my story. Probably don't have yeah. time today. I got to tell you my story sometime about 
how I got my first private money lender. But anyway, $250,000. So when he pledged me that money, I'm telling you what, that will make the rooster's feathers stand up on the back of his head when you when you are strutting around, you know, making offers on properties, you know? That's right. some, people, some people teach, oh, just go get the house under contract. The money is show up. I'm sorry. You know, I I want to know where my funding is coming from because there's always deals. There's always deals, always going to be deals. I want the money lined up, ready to go. So tell me about your posture. I got so much to ask you, Jay. I want to know about your posture when you're going and talking to people about loaning you money. I want to know a lot of my inner circle members in the past, I've seen people just have this posture of wanting to, well, you want to loan me some money? You know, you want to loan them money? It's almost like you're coming from. You're coming. That, yeah. Asking when you, when, yeah. When you just did, when you just did that, you do that. What you just described, and I felt it in your voice and in your facial expression, that person is coming from a, a, a place of scarcity, coming from a place of, um, of, of no confidence. So, so my positioning is, you know, as you've heard me say, or as I've, I've already, maybe I already said it, I don't remember. I've never asked anybody for money. So what we do is we make the private lending program available. We let people know what we do, how we do business. And anybody that's got investment capital or retirement funds, they're going to raise their hand. I mean, here's the deal. There's three reasons why private lenders want to do business with us. Okay. Number one, they're going to, three reasons private lenders want to do business with us. Number one, they're going to earn a whole lot more money than they can then save from traditional sources. I mean, my lands right now. So, you know, you, you might not know this, Chris, but maybe you do. Every Thursday, the USA Today newspaper publishes every Thursday on the front page of the money section in the lower left-hand corner, this little green box. And in the green box, it they publish the national certificate of deposit uh, average yields in the United States. As of this past Thursday, 0.91% is what the average 12-month certificate of deposit is paying in the United States. People don't know what to do with their money. So wow. number one, we come along and we pay them 8%. That's like, you know, many, many more times than they can get, uh, yeah. you know, from a CD. Not, so number one, I'm going to make a lot of money. High number, return. No, high return. Number two reason private lenders want to do business with us is their loan to us, their investment in our business is secure and safe. So it's secure because we don't borrow unsecured funds. They're going to get a mortgage, you know, in North Carolina and some states it's called a deed of trust. So they're not, so they're getting the collateral to back that note. So it's secure. It's safe because we're not borrowing more than 75% of the uh, after repaired value. And the third reason they want to do business with us is because their principal loan amount to us, their investment is not volatile. So what I'm what I'm contrasting our program to is the stock market. You know, when people invest in the stock market, they already lost money. There's fees, there's commissions, and the principal amount of their investment can be less tomorrow. And so, you know, it's like up and down. So our private lenders love there is no volatility in their investment. The principal loan amount, because we're paying or accruing interest only, the principal loan amount remains the same until cash out. So the private lenders know exactly what their return, it's, it's definitive. They know exactly what the return is going to be on their investment with us. So those are the top three reasons people want to do business. But back to that positioning, we ain't chasing, we ain't begging, you know, we're just simply making the program known. You know, I put a PowerPoint together a little time back to where um, myself and my students will they'll go we'll go like to the Rotary Club. You know, the Rotary Club is always looking for presenters and information. So we have this educational PowerPoint, and we'll go give like a little twenty minute talk. Well, hey, look, 
Them wow. people at the Rotary Club, they ain't never heard of self-directed IRAs. They've never heard of private money. And at the end of our talk, at the end of the program, people are lining up to get our little 16-minute audio that wow. talks about private money. So people are, you know, when people hear this information, they are chasing us to give us money for our deals. I love it. I love it. I know your time is limited, Jay. Just for my Roundup family, Jay, let me ask you, would it be in the realm of possibility to get you back on here one day this week to do a full training on this thing? It's already 245. I've had you for 45 minutes already. I, I don't want to twist it. We, we ain't even got started, Chris. My land. I know. <laughs> Jay, so, do you have any time? When, this week? When, have you, when have you got in mind? Let me take you. Let me look at my schedule real quick, Jay, see if I got this thing. I want to see what my mission, Jay, you, you've heard my mission is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing. I think private money to me, it just opened up a whole world for me, a whole world of opportunity. I don't have to worry about qualifying for stinking loans no more. I mean, it's just. I mean, you know, hey, look, in most cases, we ain't even got to worry about the appraisal, you know, I mean, I was going to ask you about that. You know, I mean, in my, you know, with my 48 private lenders from the warm market, not one time in, since February 2009 has anybody in my warm market asked me for an appraisal. In fact, they ain't even asked me for the CMA, the comparative market analysis from my realtor. Now, if they ask me for it, I'll give it to them. No Do problem. They even care? But they don't care. In fact, you know, here's the deal, Chris. When I started out, I would get, I would, so my private lender, so like, I never call my private lender up and say, hey, you want to do this deal? Well, that's a stupid question. Of course, they want to do the deal. They know the program, their money's sitting on the sidelines, not earning any money. I call them up and I say, looky here, I got good news. I got a deal for us. And so when I started out, I'd tell them four things, four things I'd tell the private lender. I'd tell them where, I'd tell them where the property was located. Not the street address, but like, is it in Newport, Havelock, Morehead? I'd say, good news. Got this deal in Newport. i tell them the after repaired value. Got this $200,000 house that's going to be worth two hundred dollars after we get it all fixed up. And I'd tell them when we're going to close, right? By the way, that's a big point right there. All my offers, I tell them I can close in seven days. I get more deals accepted because I can close in seven days. And I can't do that unless I got private money. And you're then the fourth the thing I'd tell them is the amount of money required to fund the deal. And you know what I found out, Chris? They don't even want to know all that. All they want to know is how much do you need and when do you need it there? That's you're it. You're giving too much information. So, hey, look, that, it's that simple. So all anyway, right. when, when do you want to get back together? Yeah, I got my schedule here. I'm looking Thursday Either how about Thursday evening, Jay? How are you looking at seven o'clock, brother? I'm looking, I'm looking. So let me see here. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Six thirty or seven. You're six thirty or you want to start at six thirty? You want to start at seven? Seven. I think seven works better for me. All right. I'm good. So oh seven we're talking seven o'clock Eastern time, right? You're standing round up family. You got the man on stage with Ron LeGrand every month is gonna be Training you on private money, Roundup family. Jay, I'm forever into debt for you. Put that on your schedule, Roundup family. Seven o'clock this Thursday coming up. What is that, Jay? That's the 20th. Uh, that is Thursday, September 26th. Seven o'clock. Right here on YouTube. Yes, thank you, Jay. Thank you. There's no way I can get, I mean, I know I only got 15 more minutes with you. I can't cover all this stuff. Okay, seven o'clock. So I'll put that uh, around that family. We'll get that. Yeah. So we got people people logging in, telling me they've met you all around the country. Huh. How are you out there, Jay? P people, uh, is there is there a minimum amount of money that's available to us to borrow? Well, that's the beautiful thing about this world of private money. We get to set the rules. We get to set the rules. So. Um, you know, I had to determine when I started borrowing private money, what was going to be the minimum amount that I was willing to accept? Because that's one of the first questions a new private lender is going to ask you in most cases is, well, what's the least amount I could start with? You know, some just want to get their 
put their little tippy toe, you know, in yeah, the water. That's you know, see how see how it goes, kind of thing. So here's my deal. So my minimum amount that I will accept is thirty thousand dollars. And let me explain where that thirty thousand dollar figure comes from. So here in here in my market, I can't buy a house for thirty thousand dollars, much less buy a house and rehab it. Oh, by the way, let's make sure everybody gets this. We're not talking private money for rehab properties only. Remember, yeah. remember them pretty houses that don't need no rehab. When the seller requires all the cash, we're still okay using the private money. All right, for the pretty houses. But anyway. So Say that again, Jay. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave that note because people think that you're just uh, you're just buying, fixing up ugly. Say that. Stay with that for a minute. Very important. So remember, private money is not just for rehabbing or buying properties that need rehab. Private money is for ugly houses. Private money is for pretty houses when the seller still requires all the cash. Uh, private money is for commercial. Uh, duplexes, quads, tries, apartments, whatever. So when the seller requires all the cash. So, hey, you got on the screen there, 730. Are we going to start at 730 or 7 oh, o'clock? Shoot. I did say I've, I've, I've heard three times so far. I've heard 630, 7, 730. You are killing Sorry. me. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> I want to make sure I show up at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, I'm listening. I'm really listening. I'm trying to do it all. <laughs> so, so, anyway, so where'd the $30,000 come from? So here's the deal. The reason I will accept a minimum of $30,000 is because I can't buy a house for $30,000, but I can rehab a house for $30,000. So if a private lender just wants to start out small, I can take their $30,000 and I can put it in second position. Right there is a really, really important point. So private money is not only for purchasing. Private money can be smaller amounts of money for rehab. So what I can do and what I do is I give the private lender that's given me a smaller amount of money. I'll give them a second lien or a junior lien. It's one of the same things. Nice. So I can be using private money to buy the house. I can get another private lender to loan me smaller amount of money, 30000 for the rehab. But here's the catch. You want to be sure you look out and protect your private lenders. So, you know, I mentioned a little while ago, we don't want to borrow more than 75% of the after-repaired value. Well, we have, we have this thing called TL, total loan to value, total loan to value. So total loan to value means you can have more than one private lender note secured by the same property. So let's do an example. Let's say we got that $200,000 after repaired value house, $200,000. Uh -huh. So we got 200,000 and we're going to borrow a maximum of 75% of the after repaired value. Uh -huh. So our maximum loan amount is $150,000. So here's where you can put that put that 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 private lender second position. So I could I could borrow a hundred thousand from private lender in first position, and then on that thirty thousand rehab, I could borrow thirty thousand from a private lender in second position. Okay, so that's how I can use private. Now there's another way I can use smaller amounts of money of private money. Now. I don't know. This is an advanced strategy, Chris. Um, you think the audience can handle this advanced strategy? So well, I hope it, the newbies will take. For me, if you're a newbie, then get some professional advice. You need to hear this stuff now, but don't apply it so you know what you're doing. Exactly. So here's an advanced strategy, and I do it all the time. You can buy a property subject to the existing note, all right, which means. We're going to buy the property. The seller is going to agree to keep the mortgage in their name. And we're going to agree to make their payments. We're not assuming the loan. We're agreeing to make their payments for them. Who in the world would do that? A motivated seller looking for debt relief. 
So I'm going to buy it subject to the existing note. Then I can get a small private lender note of $30,000, say, put that in second position underneath that first position, which is the subject to note. And I can use that money in second position to bring their payments current if they're behind, if the house needs some repairs, cover carrying costs, mm, marketing, et cetera. Sweet. Do it all the time, all the time. I'm, I'm drooling on that one. I love those. Yep. Yep. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So many questions. Jay, let me ask you, when we do this thing on Thursday, I know I got eight minutes left, Jay. Can you go over the documents that uh, are possibly needed when we're putting this stuff together? <laughs> yeah. And you know what's beautiful about it, Chris, is the document. There's only five documents to close a private lender loan. Five okay. documents. And um, I mean, you know, compared to borrowing money from the bank, I mean, you know, it's like my word. I don't have an example around here, but you know, it's like you close. You probably threw them all out. I know I do. It's like that thick, right? You know, for, right. A, tra for a traditional loan, right? Where, where's the blood sample? You got the blood sample in there? So a private lender, it's like that thick, right? So five documents. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll be glad to go over those um, Thursday evening uh, when we're on the show, if you want me to. Yeah, Jay, I'm so honored to be with you. I mean, I literally, I, just, I can't, I'm, I'm in a chat room with Jay Connor around our family, the, the authority. You know, I love it when you got the chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A. You got the burger at Fud Ruckers. You got the <laughs> private money. The <laughs> I love it. big. Love it. Right, let's get to some quick Q&A. Then I'm going to let you go, Jay. I got you five more minutes. I got a few questions. Round up, family. Get your questions answered by Jay Connor live right here on my uh, YouTube channel. And while you're here, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, the like button, and subscribe to my channel, Round Up Family. Make sure you take it, <laughs> take it to what do you think, Jay. <laughs> what are you doing with a subscribe button on a, on a concrete block? That's what I want to know. We'll get to that's another training. We'll get to that training later. <laughs> Daniel, man, man, thank you for your I, love. I gotta, man, I gotta huh? get me a YouTube channel like you. My land. <laughs> Shoot. Hey, look, I was looking at I was looking at one of your um YouTube broadcasts not long ago. You got over a million views, man. Over a million views on on one show. <laughs> one <laughs> show, my lands. Jay, we could go, you and me could go back and forth all day, man. Mercy. It's something. My brother said, look at that, the vegan investor, two of his favorite inv creative investors. That's true. Oh, my lands, the, the vegan investor. Look, hey, look. All right, this guy right here, the vegan investor, here's all I got to say, Mr. Vegan Investor. I need to go vegan so I will look like you because, like, you know, <laughs> I put on my suits now. I look like a busted can of biscuits. Right? <laughs> you know? Especially my white suit. I look like a busted can of biscuits. You are too much. Ron Grand right man. That's right. So uh, Demario asked, Demario Owens, round up family. Make sure you get your questions in real quick. Put your city or your state in so we know where you're coming in from. Demario, how soon do you have to pay the private lenders back if they – don't want to negotiate the terms and the options. Uh, can you help me understand that question? I don't know. Demario, it sounds like he's asking if they don't want to negotiate. Oh, extension. That's right. We talked about that uh, earlier in the show. Oh, we okay. So, well, so you know, some of the, so the terms, it's, it's two years. It's two years. If they're loaning us money from their investment capital, just liquid funds, five years. Um, if it's coming from the retirement funds with them using a self-directed IRA. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I pay them off when we cash out and here's the deal. And that was a good question. If I haven't cashed out for whatever reason in the length of the note, 100% of the time they want to extend the note with yeah. no fees. They just want to keep, to keep their money working. 
what are they going to do with the money? They don't want it back. It's like a hot potato. Jay, let me ask you, Kelly, banks are paying not even 1%. To me, it's almost like the banks don't even want to take their money. So we're taking the money and getting it working for them. That's what I'm saying. Mr. Fantastic, 824, is private lending realistic? I remember that philosophy. When you're brand new to real estate. <clears throat> Excellent question. Excellent question. So I got a couple of different answers. Uh, and here's the deal. I love that, Mr. Fantastic. I'm loving that. So, Mr. Fantastic, let me tell you what's fantastic about private money here. So, number one, I know you're asking who in the world is going to loan me private money when I've never done a deal and I'm brand new. So, yeah. Mr. Fantastic, two answers. Number one, and I want you to write this down and, and like, and like, like, like ingrain this on your brain. Here's the deal. If you don't pay the private lender, the property does. If you don't pay the, pro uh, the private lender, the property does, which means if you don't pay them, if you screw up, you don't pay them, they're going to get the property, which means they're <laughs> going to make more money off of the equity of that property than the interest that you would be paying them. Um, let me give you a second answer that complements that. So I get it. I get it. I get it. If you've never done a real estate deal and if confidence is good. So I'll, I will really dive deep into this Thursday night when we're back on here, uh, Chris, on, 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 on this. But here's the deal. You offer to a seasoned real estate investor a way to bring money to the table. Uh -huh. And you say, look, so, and you know, I, I tell them, I tell everybody, Chris, say, look, the best way to learn is to work with somebody that's been through the minefield. They know what they're doing. Join, you know, join up with the hip. And here's the deal. At your local RIA or your local meetup or wherever your local group is, you go to that meeting. And, and once you learn this private money thing here that we're going to dive deep into Thursday night, you come and you come to that meeting, you say, look, and here's a seasoned real estate investor. All right. Let's say his name is Chris Haskins. And Chris is at the meeting. You come up to Mr. Chris Haskins, you say, hey, my name is Mr. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I've never done a real estate deal in my life. But I know how to bring money to the table for us to do deals. Would you work with me, Mr. Haskins, and share with me your experience and what you've learned and my part of the partnership is I can bring money to the table for our deals. I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, Mr. Chris Haskins is going to say, come into my world. You bring the money and, and, wow. we'll do, and we'll do business together. I love the way you set that up, Jay. You know what's weird? I remember my inner circle members, they would bring lenders in because they didn't have the expertise and we would just partner up with them. Talk, to them, talk about bringing massive value to my day, as opposed to saying, you know, could you do, could you find a deal, do the deal and give me half the pro? I don't have time for that. <clears throat> and most, uh, let me ask you, Jay, most veteran investors, they got so much going on up here. They're not worried about putting another deal together and giving you half the profit, are they? No, no. And here's the deal. I mean, you know, you offer to bring money to the table and, mm. and learn from a seasoned real estate investor. Making my life easier. Well, my, here's the deal. I mean, what if you only get, you know, 25% of the profit or 20% of the profit? Uh, that's fantastic. I mean, what have you got at risk? Nothing. nothing. You got nothing. nothing at risk. And I call that, you know, you know, learn while you earn, right? Yep. Earn while you learn. Uh, VV. Hey, VV, you want to use, you want to use private money to buy a home for yourself. Yes. Oh. Yes, I'm so glad VV just said that. I mean, here's the deal. Private money is just not for real estate investing. Private money is for your own house, you know? Wow. Like, so we use these different funding strategies to buy our own house. Hey, look, <clears throat> I've, got, I've got this student uh, up, in, uh, up in Gates, North Carolina, that is buying a house subject to the existing note right now. It's got like 3,000 square feet and they're moving it in it themselves. So whether you're buying wow. with private money, subject to, it don't matter. My lands, treat yourself to your own mansion. There you go. There you go. Okay, Vivi, a good question. 
Uh, Sloan's Lawn Care. How did you sign up for private lending? How would we sign up for some stuff like this? I guess we'll go over that on Thursday. Yeah, we'll cover that on, on Thursday. So how do you sign up for private lending? As, is We'll dive deep on that. I'm not sure I, well, I'm not 100% sure I understand the question, but uh, how to sign up for private lending. I'm going to go over, I'll go over Thursday night, the five steps, if you want me to, Chris. Yeah. I'll go over the five steps to getting private money from your warm market. And I'll go over five steps of getting money uh, from existing private lenders. Nice. Okay. No, St. Louis cash buyers. No, 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 no. Private lenders never ask about credit scores. Hallelujah. Okay, <laughs> Chris. OG's Fish Room, New York City. How do you find it? Jay, he's going to cover that on Thursday, 7 o'clock. Become a private lender. Oh, my land. Yeah, okay. I understand. I will become a private lender. Sloan's Lawn Care. I am so glad you asked that question. Not only do I borrow a lot of private money, I am a private lender. So, you know, a lot of people, and Chris, you've heard me say this, near about every time Sloan's Lawn Care, near about every time I do my private money talk and train real estate investors, I, in fact, I was up in Chicago this past weekend and I had this lady come up to me after my talk and says, Jay, I don't want to borrow private money. I want to be a private lender. How do I do that? So, yes, I got training for people that want to be uh, a private lender as well. In fact, we can talk about that Thursday night if we got time. Uh, Let's Chris. Do it, yeah. It's three o'clock, Jay. I'm going to go ahead and let you go, man. I know you're out of here. Final thoughts. Just give us the final nugget for somebody that's been in the business, raised millions of dollars of private money. What can you tell people? Just something to get them out there to possibly get some private money to get this ball rolling. Absolutely. Well, first of all, get back on this show. Get back on Chris's show this Thursday night because uh, we will dive deep step by step on how to get the money. Uh, we'll go over the categories. We'll talk about where it is. I'll even teach you where to go get the private money because, you know, I've learned this. The more money you waller in, the more money sticks well, to you. Stick to you. <clears throat> and so we'll cover all that on Thursday night. Um, hey, hey, look here. The best advice I can give to the people that have yet to do their first real estate deal, do not, do not, do not go about this business when you're starting out on your own. Get yourself a mentor. Get yourself somebody to work with. Um, I mean, you know, Chris Haskins, you know, Jay Connor, somebody local, work <clears throat> with somebody that can hold your hand. And you know what I've discovered, Chris, the successful people, once they reach that level of success, they are looking for a purpose. They're looking for significance Something and most successful people that you ask for help. They are willing, able and ready to help you out. Do Something not go about this business by yourself. I'm going to let you go, Jay. Favorite book, my friend. Oh, my Thank land. You. My favorite book. My fa I got so many. I got so many. So Give us two or three. Oh, my word. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three books right now. Uh, the book that changed my life and the course of my direction when I was 24 years old is The University of Success. That's OG. My, I just mentioned that. Oh, what is his name? University of Success by Og Mandino. University of Success by Og Mandino. Number two book, Biggest Impact. And uh, next to that one is Maximum Achievement by Brian Tracy. B-R-I-A-N Tracy. T-R-A-C-Y. Maximum Achievement. And my most recent favorite book that I am devouring is the 5 a.m. Club, 5 a.m. Club by Robin, R-O-B-I-N, Sharma, S-H-A-R-M-A. -A. And it's not all about getting up early in the morning ritual, but it's about your entire life. But yeah, so I could talk an hour about the 5 a.m. Club. I'm so excited about that. Um, nice. Talking about clarity, sharpness, all that stuff. But yeah, those three books right there, brother. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash moneyguide 
That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.